Hi, in this video of Oracle PLSQL, we will cover about the cursors. Basically, cursor in Oracle PLSQL is a private work area where it points out to the number of rows that are being affected or retrieved while executing a PLSQL block. So basically, whenever you execute any DDL or DQL, that is data retrieval language or means a select statement, this cursor will be in action. So by the time you are doing any DML operation such as insert, update or delete, the implicit cursor will be in action with the name SQL. Alright, so implicit cursor is something which we don't need to define. So by Oracle Server, it got defined with the name SQL and you can control the number of rows which are getting affected while executing the insert, update or delete statement. While for the retrieval, we have to define the explicit cursor if I want to control the execution of my program. So in this particular video, we will just focus on the implicit cursor while we will start designing the explicit cursor in our next video. Whenever we will talk about a cursor, it would be having some attributes as row count. Row count means it will return the number of rows which are getting affected by a particular statement, whether it's a select or any DML statement. Found, not found. As the name says, both are uh, antonym of each other. If you got the records the by the condition you have passed in a query, it will be like found. And if you didn't found anything, you will be getting, you, you can use the not found attribute. Anytime when you execute a cursor, you will have to open that. So later, if you want to check like whether your cursor is open or not, you can use the is open attribute. So basically all these three like found, not found and is open will return you a boolean value. So found when you get the result, not found when you did not get the result and is open if to check like whether the cursor is open or not. So let's start implementing the implicit cursor and see how can we deal with them. To implement the implicit cursor, I will first of all declare some variables here like one is the counter which will take care of the number of affected rows. So number, I'll make it a three digit number. And inside after that, I will start working with this begin and end block. So here I will write a very simple uh, statement like update employees, which is a table set salary is equal to salary plus two where department ID is equal to 20. Now, whenever this SQL statement, this DML statement update or insert or delete will be executed, one cursor will be there, which name will be SQL. So if I want to check how many records are going to be updated, what I can do, I can simply use this count is equal to SQL, which is nothing but the name of your cursor and then the attribute row count. So percent row count will give the number of rows which are executed. And right after this, what I can do, I can simply say dbms underscore output dot put underscore line. That is CNT rows updated. All right, as it will give me a number. So let's end it. And let's execute it. So you can see two rows updated. Why? Because if I will say select count asterisk from employees where department ID is equal to 20. So you can see there are only two records, two employees are there who are working in department 20. And after this execution, this will update only those two records. So you can manage of uh, means if you want to get the number of records after a particular DML statement and if you want to restrict that, you can anytime go and use this row count or other attributes of the SQL implicit cursor.